Hello, Booktube, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Well, this week I managed to finish off Volume 1 of Journey to the West, and I filmed a video on it. Uh, it actually ended up being two videos. If you've watched the video, you know why. It's because I ran out of storage space on the phone, so I had to split it into two videos. One video meaning one video giving the background to the series and why I was reading it, and then the other video trying to sum up everything that happened uh, in Volume 1. Uh, I also uh, managed to finish off my review of The Odyssey. Now, The Odyssey I finished off way back on January 1st, but uh, didn't get around to filming a review of it until this past week. Uh, I'm, I'm working on a little bit of a review backlog right now because I got a lot of reading done when I was traveling on vacation, but now need to find the time to make videos of them. But yes, I, I got this done, so this was another video I did this past week. And then one more video from this past week, which was uh, Buddha, Volume 5, uh, Deer Park. And I've, I've since then started Buddha, Volume 6, um, but, but uh, I'm only a little ways into that. Um, and then uh, the reading for this week... Uh, so so the, the next review project is The Storm Before the Storm. This is another book where I finished on, on vacation, but now need to get around to finishing my review of it. Uh, and uh, I've decided I'm going to start rereading some of these books just to keep them fresh in my mind. So I, I've read up through page 20 uh, on The Storm Before the Storm, on my rereading. And then... Volume 2 of Journey to the West, and so far I've finished off chapter 26, uh, 27, and I'm halfway through chapter 28. <clears throat> now, um, I, I want to maybe give a little apologies for uh, the way these weekly reading vlogs have been for, I don't know, the past nine months or so. Because I, I think for the past nine months, I, I've been getting into the habit of just giving page totals for each week and then complaining about how busy I am. And, you know, I, I have been busy. But the purpose of these weekly reading vlogs, when I started them up uh, a year and a half ago or so, uh, was to talk about what I had been reading that week. You know, talk about the chapters I read, not not merely to just give page counts. So, sorry for the past nine months, or, or however long it's been, six months. Uh, I am going to try to get back into talking about um, the, the what's happened in the pages, in the chapters I've, I've read this week. Now, uh, Journey to the West, Volume 1, I did actually finish off this week. But since I already did a whole video on that, I'm just going to let it pass and go to the next book. Um, so if you're not familiar with this book, uh, the basic idea is that there's a monkey, a pig, and a monk who are traveling west to get the sacred Buddhist text from India that they're going to take back with them to China. And they have adventures along the way. It's, it's very episodic. Uh, sometimes the chapters will, um, sorry, sometimes the adventures will be one chapter, but sometimes the adventures will be two chapters or, or more. But they're, they're very clearly episodes, you know, define, definable episodes with like beginning, middle, end, and then on to the next episode. Just because of the way the, the episodes work out, uh, there's an episode that started in volume one and continues over to volume two. This is where the um, <coughs> the the monk, uh, the monkey, and the pig are are traveling along, and they get to uh, a palace in the mountains of a Taoist immortal. So uh, there's some mixing of Taoism and Buddhism in this. Uh, book, and I don't completely understand it. There is something in the introduction about how it's a Buddhist legend, but it was it, it, it achieved written form during a heavily Taoist period in, in Chinese history or something like that. So this is a Taoist monk who's achieved immortality. 
uh, and the Taoist is going up to heaven to deliver some sort of lecture. And while he's gone, uh, he, he recognizes that the monk and the monkey and the pig, there's also Friar Sand and the horse, but they, they're such non-entities in this book, they almost don't even count. It's just like they're also along for the ride. <coughs> He, he knows that there's, they're going to be coming to his palace. And he's, he's got two uh, young boys who, who are going to be um, taking care of it. And he gives instructions that uh, the monk is going to be given uh, one of the man fruits. And uh, the Taoist is familiar with the monk from its, his previous incarnation. So the monk, again, is the golden cicada who uh, apparently is being punished by Buddha because he refused to listen to Buddha and he's going through these cycles of reincarnation now. But uh, his, the, the Taoist immortal knows him from his old days as the golden cicada. So he says, this is my friend, the golden cicada. Give him one of the man fruits. Now the man fruits, uh, there's this big tree uh, which produces man fruits and they're called man fruits because they look just like babies. Uh, and they only like 30 of them grow at a time and they only only 10 of them will ever become ripe at any given time and it only happens like once every 30,000 years or something like that. I don't remember. There's this whole long thing about how long it takes them to grow, how long it takes them to become ripe and at, at so it's something like and within 30,000 years only a few of them are ever ripe. Now, if you eat these, if you, if you can smell these man fruits, then you'll live for like 300 years. And if you eat them, then you live for, I don't remember what it is, 10,000 years or something like that. So uh, they've been, but, but they're, they're very precious because like only 10 of them are ripe right now. And then the, the others won't bloom for like another 30,000 years or something like that. So the, the, the boys present them to the monk and the monk looks at it uh, and he says, I am not going to eat a baby. This is ridiculous. And they try, they try and explain to him that it's not really a baby. It's just a fruit that looks like a baby. But he, he refuses to listen to him. Um, so the, the boys go and eat the man fruit themselves. But the pig and the monkey uh, witness this, I guess the, the pig especially. And the pig becomes really upset. He's, he's like, well, if the monk didn't want it, we should have gotten it ourselves uh, rather than those boys just eating it. So the monkey goes into the garden to steal some man fruit from the tree. Uh, and then he and the pig and, and the others eat it. And then when the boys realize the man fruit is missing, they come in and they, and they yell at him. And the monkey gets so mad, uh, he takes out his golden cudgel. This is the monkey's weapon and knocks down the tree. Killing it completely. And then when the Taoist immortal gets back, he is furious. And there's there's a little bit of um, they try and escape, and they get captured from the by the Taoist immortal, and then they escape again. Uh, and and again, this is throughout this this book. There's all these magical powers going on. It's a little bit difficult to try and figure out who has what magical powers and what are the limitations of each power. But for the most part. I, you, you don't let it bother you. You just enjoy the story. So they, they get captured, they escape, they get captured, they escape. But, but finally, um, the, the, the Taoist immortal seems to have them. Uh, and the, the, the monkey tries to uh, get him to agree. It says, if, if I go and find a cure for your tree, will you promise to release my master? So the, the monkey's master being the monk. The Taoist immortal agrees. Uh, so then uh, the monkey goes to many different places and interacts with many different spirits and, uh, and heavenly beings. And I assume that these are entities that would be familiar in Chinese mythology. Uh, I mean, I think this, this book is based on Chinese mythology and is making use of pre-existing gods and goddesses, but I don't know. Um, but then, uh, eventually after finding several people who can't help them, uh, the monkey ends up at, uh, let's see, how is this pronounced? 
Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva or Guanyan, the female Buddha, who, um, yeah, it's um, one of the many, one of the many outs of this book, and in addition to the monkey having near infinite powers, is uh, frequently when the monkey gets in a tight spot, he just kind of escalates just to somebody more powerful than him. And uh, Bodhisattva is just about as powerful as you can get. If there's something she can't handle, then you would go all the way up to Buddha. Um, so, so she comes and she heals the tree, and then the Taoist immortal becomes really good friends with the monkey. And then we go on to the next episode, which starts in 20, chapter 27. Now, in this episode, they're again traveling through the mountains on their pilgrimage west. Uh, and there's a demon who recognizes that the monk is the golden cicada in his different incarnations. Uh, and uh, because the golden cicada is so uh, holy, or I don't know, uh, the, the, the demon says he, he's going to be really delicious to eat and, and will give me longevity or something. So the, the demon has a plot to eat the monk. Um, the, the Great Courses series uh, on their history of world literature mentioned that, that, that this was something that was going to be reoccurring throughout this book, that various demons want to eat the monk be, because it, he's got very holy flesh, which will, will be very tasty or give him longevity. I think this is the first episode so far where a demon has wanted to eat him for that purpose, knowing he's the reincarnation of the golden cicada. But we'll, we'll see how often it comes in from here. So the, the, the demon disguises himself as a, a girl who's uh, coming to give them food, a, a pretty young girl. Uh, and the monkey sees right through uh, the disguise and notices that it's a demon, but the rest of them don't. So the monkey takes his, his golden cudgel and strikes it down. Uh, and the demon's able to escape from the husk of the body before the golden cudgel hits. So uh, the, the, the body falls down, but the demon has escaped. But now the, <coughs> excuse me, the monk and the pig uh, think that the monkey has just killed this innocent young girl and the monkey's trying to explain to them that it was really a demon. Uh, and then the demon comes back disguised as an old woman who's looking for her lost granddaughter. And again, the monkey realizes that it's the, the demon and, and same thing happens. He, he hits it with its cudgel. The demon escapes uh, from the husk of the body, but it looks like the monkey has just killed this innocent old woman, and the monk is really mad now. Uh, and then the demon comes back disguised as an old man, and the same thing happens. Uh, and uh, the, the monk uh, releases the monkey from his service. Uh, it says, uh, and the, the monkey pleads with him not to do it, but the monk says, that, you know, there's no reforming you. You'll always be a wicked creature. So the monkey then goes back to his home on the magic mountain in the Eastern Sea, which he hasn't been to uh, since chapter nine or something of book one. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and in terms of the internal time frame of the book, he hasn't been there for 500 years because he's been trapped under the mountain uh, for his punishment with his rebellion against heaven. And he goes down there and he, he finds that it's a wreck of its former self. It's been, I guess, after he got captured by heaven, the god Erlang, who was one of the gods who had fought against him, uh, yeah, the god Erlang and the seven brothers of Mishan, who had fought against him in volume one, and who, I get, again, I think are from older Chinese mythology. I, I, I did actually look up this on Wikipedia, and there is something about a god Erlang. Uh, apparently his depictions in older Chinese mythology are quite different than his depictions in Journey to the West, but from older Chinese mythology. Um, and... Uh, most of the monkey's uh, followers, his other monkeys and his animal army, were either killed during that attack by the god Erlang, or they've been subsequently killed by the hunters. So I guess there are hunters who come every day. Now, it's not clear to me if the hunters, it describes the hunters coming in on horses. Uh, and it's, 
It's one of the many passages in this book where it, it reverts back to, to a poem to describe what's going on. Uh, there, it's not clear to me if they're from the island or if they're traveling across the sea. Uh, there's some, seems to be some elements of the supernatural describing them in this, the, in this poem. Um, uh, Bull-headed fiends block the path with, path with nets. Demon kings were handling knotted ropes. Uh, so uh, makes me wonder if they're supposed to be demons. Sometimes it's a little bit unclear in this book who's a demon and who's not. Um, or it could just be metaphorical language. So I don't know if they're demon hunters who are coming across the sea or if they're just hunters who live on the island. But either way, the monkey makes a huge, great hurricane uh, to kill them all. So this is another one of those powers that the monkey has. The monkey seems to have like almost infinite powers. I don't think the ability to create a hurricane uh, has come up before. And in fact, in volume one, the monkey was fighting, fighting against a demon who was able to create a, a hurricane. Uh, and the monkey seemed to be at a disadvantage against that demon. But uh, I don't know. Uh, now, the, the irony here is that the monkey has just killed, like, uh, what is it, like a thousand uh, hunters? More than a thousand hunters? Yeah, over a thousand hunters. And he just got banished by the monk because the monk thought he killed, like, only three people. So, so the, the monkey is boasting to his followers, well, you know, that silly monk, he sent me away for because he thought I only killed three people. Now I've just killed a thousand. Then we go back to the monk and the others. Uh, and uh, the monk sends the others off to get food, the pig and friar sand. They don't come back. And then the monk ends up walking around and he sees a, a pagoda in the bamboo and he enters into it and the, there's a poem there that says this is actually a demon pagoda so the monk is about to get in trouble but that's as far as i've read so far so that's that's my summary of my reading for this week and i'll come back to report on how things progress next week